Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of your favorite brothers doing what they do best, having a discussion. Yes, we're going to cover everything from what is very close to being an all-out nightmare for AEW. Uh, we're going to look at NXT UK <laughs> TakeOver Cardiff. What a mouthful that is. Um, and we got everything in between. Man, we had a, another solid week of WWE programming, all five, six, seven, eight, nine hours of it. Maybe not every hour, but at least three of those nine hours were good, right? Yeah. So we're going to make time for that. We're going to make time for Cardiff this Saturday at 2 p.m. I, I thought we were going to sleep in and AEW had to go ahead and not follow suit with the UK time zone. So bastards. Matt? How are you? I am super sleepy and tired, Mike. I, uh, well, I stood next to my wife as she gave Oh, here we go. <laughs> How long are we going to milk this baby thing, man? It's already week two. Old hat. All right. Well. What, hap what happened with your wife? Well, I mean, we, <laughs> we had a baby. Um, so, yeah, we welcomed a little, uh, what, what I was hoping is we could have a discussion with, uh, uh, the group and figure out if we need to call my new little girl is she a baby of discussion a sister of discussion um you know i'm i'm partial to princess of discussion um but uh oh, yeah spoiled brat oh man it's coming she's, she's not... uh go ahead no i don't want to all right but... she's she's the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world to me and uh <laughs> I couldn't be happier, but goddamn, I also have never been more tired my entire life. Ah, yeah, so here we go. Put that coffee maker to work. I'm trying. It's uh, it's tough. You got to... your French press. You got your drip. You got your cold brew. I do. You got all that stuff over there. I do. It's still hard to get up in the morning and make that happen. But uh, what? Oh man, see, I can't even do transitions well. Um. What you need to make happen, you as a listener of the Brothers of Discussion, <laughs> is head on over to at BOD Podcast, <laughs> which is our Twitter account. You can find the Facebook account, Some... but uh, head on over to our group discussion account. Uh, that's where all the magic's happening. That's where we're getting uh, down to the nitty gritty, figuring out, uh, Mike, we're figuring out what's a spoiler, what's not a spoiler today. Um, <laughs> I, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there. If it's been on TV, it's not a spoiler anymore. <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's that's where we're drawing the line um but we'll we'll get into that in the group but if you want to join that fun chat uh head on over to the brothers of discussion uh, live wrestling discussion uh you can also now follow us on instagram just go ahead and search brothers of discussion you'll find us that way and uh we're going to be posting on there for not only the uh the wrestling uh but we also want to build up as a brand our new hockey podcast which is going to be starting in, in a month so we'll be recording in less than a month to get started yeah uh we're going to be focusing since we're out of detroit the detroit red wings uh the greatest nhl organization of all time just not so much uh nowadays but uh all that fun stuff will be found on instagram uh so right now it's going to mainly be pro wrestling and that'll uh, obviously feature a lot of what we're going to be talking about for all out this weekend and take over uh, but heading into October, you're going to have a mix of wrestling and some hockey, but, uh, more or less, it's going to be selling us, Mike and Matt, Brothers of Discussion. On Sometimes. top of that, bodpodcast.com and brothersofdiscussion.com. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Sometimes you can just tell it's going to be a great show. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm cranking back the, uh, oatmeal cream pie IPAs, compliments of Pigeon Hill Brewing Company, and Matt... As roughly a half hour of sleep over the past two weeks, so this, this is going to be a good one. I can feel it. I have uh, I have my Yeti is filled with water. Um, oh, I was I was tr I I actually asked my wife, "Can I have a beer?" And she said, "Yeah." She's she's not that wife to like. No, you can't have a beer. She she said, "Yeah," 
Oh, but then I, I like reached for the door to my garage to go grab one, and I was like, hmm, I can't do it. Eh. This sounds like a trick. <laughs> no, it's nothing against her. I just, I can't, I couldn't make myself do it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just drinking old water. I so. think, I think you, you owe me a beer. I, I owe you a beer? Yeah. Uh, the first thing we wanted to talk about was these King of the Ring brackets, Matt. And we had some more results come in. And I think you and I collectively, we, we went all in. Apologies to AEW. We went all in on McIntyre. I mean, I'm always yeah. all in on McIntyre. Uh, it's no secret. Um, and I, I was... I, what I, what I, t- he what wasn't, I... uh, he wasn't eliminated in the finals. He wasn't eliminated in the semifinals. He wasn't <laughs> eliminated in the quarterfinals. He was eliminated in the first round, Matt. Yep. And, and what I thought was funny was even Michael Cole. He wasn't trying... eliminated by a large man. He wasn't eliminated by a medium man. Yep. He was eliminated by a little man that was you stole my thunder uh michael cole pointed out <laughs> as the match was winding down that mcintyre has trouble with smaller guys does he though <laughs> i think he has trouble with any guy if it's a <laughs> match that means something i i don't get it i i i don't think i'll understand what's going on anymore in the wwe you heard it here hot take i don't get it um <laughs> I think most uh, it doesn't of the, get any hotter than that. Most I don't of the get WWE it. universe seem to be behind that. I mean, unless unless we're working towards a Ricochet versus Cedric Alexander match, which oh boy, please God, don't give me a promo for that match. But if we're just <laughs> looking for some good wrestling in another couple weeks, yeah, that that'll be fine, of course. Um, <laughs> but I think but when uh, we're talking when we... about building a roster, yeah, what are we? What are we doing? Who's who's a good heel on this roster now? Um, yeah. Well, nobody. He's, he's not. He's not quite in this tournament. I, I'd say. Uh, so that's sixteen guys off the map. Uh, hmm. One of our big heels is currently tag teaming with the guy he's gonna fight for the universal championship. So he's off the map. I don't know, Matt. What are we doing? I, it why how how did we get to a point where Baron Corbin is a likelier contender than Drew McIntyre? Well, yeah, no, you, you uh, let, let's do that. So McIntyre's out. Uh, Gables is is through. Ali takes down Buddy, Buddy Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, what, what the hell? And uh, and like you mentioned, uh, it's Baron Corbin over the Miz again. Would have been a great character to move forward uh, in this tournament, but. Um, uh, nope so <laughs> what well, let's uh you know what last week uh we tried to qualify who is going to do well right oh by the way the, the last two i don't think you officially said ricochet and smojo i'm sorry if you did uh oh no we tried i meant to... the victories the go ahead yeah I, no i, I, I thought I... you're saying they advanced yeah well, it's, Elias... it was the four matches this week mcintyre goes down but yeah ricochet yeah. advances uh well, last week we tried to talk about King of the Ring should be qualifying somebody who's a character and prove that they can wrestle. Because mm-hmm. um, Brock Lesnar, he won, and I'd say he was uh, more of a character. I mean, we know he can fight in real life, but this was kind of proving, oh shit, he can destroy anybody. The best example, obviously, is Stone Cold, because we knew he was a you know foul mouth character, and then he got to win a tournament. Yeah. And it just seems like it's best for business if you have somebody who can't... Uh, they just don't have that reputation as a fighter. This is your opportunity to literally go through a tournament of fighters and come out on top, where we're keeping track of wins and losses over the course of a month, where WWE historically does not care about wins and losses because they love, you know... I guess, let me rephrase that. They do care about doing 50-50 booking... But they don't want you to keep track of who's on top and who's not, because you'll start to see some of the people's like win streaks that aren't quite fifty fifty. I would, you know what I'm saying? I would totally but, settle for McIntyre getting a fifty fifty booking. <laughs> at this point, yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, I it's mean, definitely kind of slanting a little bit towards uh, thirty seventy. But I guess Matt, if you're looking at who's left, I I don't know if there's a lot of great microphone Smiths remaining uh elias 
Okay. I mean, the crowd's kind of cooling on him because he never really gets a push. Yep. Uh, Baron Corbin, I guess, because people hate him. Yep. I guess I guess that's heat, if they just hate your soul. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Samoa Joe, who you know, all of us you know, Smarks have loved him uh, since he's been aboard, but uh, he hasn't won anything of note. So we're very close to this just being a cruiserweight championship. And I'll, I'll throw this out there, Mike. Um, it, it it's it's something that I never took into consideration when I was building out like my my fake bracket. Um, you know, I, I I think we all had Elias and Andrade moving forward. Um, but I wasn't, you know, what I wasn't doing was was what they have done is try to pair up a face with a heel. So you've got Joe and Ricochet, Alexander and Corbin, Gable and Andrade, Elias and Ali. So right there, you're kind of putting together who's who's winning, like, going forward, right? Uh, Baron Corbin gets a win over The Miz, which didn't need to happen. So he's probably winning over Cedric Alexander, um, which means Ricochet would beat Samoa Joe which I believe Samoa Joe had already beaten Ricochet a little bit, so a little bit of payback there. So now you've got face Ricochet, Baron Corbin heel. And I'm going way, I'm going actually deeper into this than I wanted to, but uh, on the other side, uh, I think we are seeing Elias move on, which is so weird, because that would mean Chad Gable goes over Andrade. Um, and then the flip side, Andrade and Ali is fine, but then Elias again just disappears into nothingness um out in the second round of this turn i just the point i was coming to was that our expectations were way too high for this tournament that that's I, like what your expectations for drew mcintyre's career were too high yeah no it's uh that's, that's the problem <laughs> this um, love affair is not gonna turn out well for you matt i'm sorry i guess i just i'm, I'm kind of looking at it now like where we were talking about like the stone colds winning the king of the ring and i think now this is more like those last couple years of king of the ring where it didn't really mean much or maybe the first couple years so it's just i i i don't know i did it mean anything that king booker was king booker over booker t i mean if anything it just made me angry whenever he was on tv because i loved hearing booker t being booker t a king a booker yeah, yeah like i think that's what we're that's what we're seeing here i think that's the king of the ring that we're in now so you're i think the guys that are more most likely to win are right now are baron corbin and elias wow uh i i I totally think the opposite. Uh, I mean, like, coming from other uh, matchups, I think it's can probably going to be Rick, Ricochet and Andrade in the final. Can I qualify the opposite? You, you're you saying that the next two King of the Ring matches will be Ali and Elias and Alexander and Corbin, and they're both going to lose. So they're not only losing, they're going. They're the next two guys being kicked out of this tournament. I just, that's, that's what the opposite would mean. I, I want to make sure I've got that one right. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the brackets, and you had. I thought you were saying you had Corbin and Elias coming out. I feel like those, like based on what I'm seeing, this King of the Ring is probably going to be. That's the they. They should be your top guys. They should be the guys that you're saying these two will win this tournament. I mean, I think Ricochet is going all the way to the finals. Uh, it's. It's gonna. It looks like it's gonna be Ricochet probably losing to Andrade. Is it just because he's King Ricochet online? It could be. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> I just. I, I don't know. Like this booking it, is. Uh, it'll be. I, it, I think it's puzzling. I, I don't. I. I think we thought it would just propel stories forward, and we, collectively, at arm's length are keeping ricochet because his promo work has been god awful right so um why make him king of the ring i guess what they're gonna try to do is let's highlight that give him the microphone after he wins (laughs) we are gonna keep this guy on the payroll we sell t-shirts with this guy it seems like kids like him so maybe we can get a whole generation to follow this guy's career till he's retired 
So he can't really talk. We can't force him to talk. Let's just prove he's a really great wrestler by having to win King of the Ring. But these matches haven't necessarily been. Ama- I mean, you, you, Buddy Murphy and Ali has probably been my favorite match so far. But oh yeah, this hasn't necessarily been a, a highlight of right the best wrestling that we've seen. I think we. I mean, Ricochet, saw better Ricochet matches on NXT. match was pretty good. Well, I mean, it, it was wasn't fine. like it was an NXT good, but yeah. you know, it was it was fine. The ending was kind of dumb, made no sense. I'm I'm better. <laughs> we we, I'm we know that. <laughs> um. All right. So I I mean I I I think I've made my point where I think I uh, now I see where this King of the Ring is going. Where I thought maybe we could crown like a brand new heel champion, but I I think it's more going to be like a doofy. This guy's king corbin king elias uh kind of thing and they're gonna hold that moniker like that that that's that's what this turn uh uh king king barrett that's what this is not oh yeah yeah um so that's that's fine i just you know my 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 own expectations built this up uh to be way more than uh what i think it's gonna be mike if you're right and it is ricochet i think that's different from king barrett i don't think ricochet is gonna carry the crown and everything but, um, eh, you know, I, I don't, I don't think it, it's the best know, move, but it's a better, I guess, it, a more interesting yeah, it move reminds than where my head's at. It definitely feels like this is like a paper champion. Yeah. Where I think we had pie in the sky dreams that this was going to coronate Drew, and then he would get up there and cut one of his mean scottish promos and you know start serving notice to every one of the superstars of the wwe locker room that he was coming to kick some ass and win championships and that's not what's gonna happen well I don't... we're gonna get we're either gonna get ricochet crying or andrade deferring to his uh non-wife to speak for him so and I'll, I'll remind all the listeners too last week i did pick elias to win this thing so I, or I should say the last two weeks. Um, so I'm still sticking to my guns by saying Elias is coming out. I just wanted McIntyre to win this. Um, so I know we just we power rank this with Big Mac at the top, and then Andrade, and then Elias, and Ricochet. We had all the way at seven. We didn't even have him as our number one face. We had Ali above Ricochet, <laughs> and it, I, the way it's seeding out. Oof, I. I don't feel good about Joe winning because they're not going to have Joe versus Cedric Alexander because nobody's going to be, you know, interested in that. I, I don't know. I know. It's, I don't know. it's tough. But they found they found a way to make it a little less interesting. Mike, it, so. it, gets, it gets more confusing. But life gets better. <laughs> uh, uh, I said because the opposite. Not only, <laughs> not only did I have to pour one out for Matt and his relationship with Drew McIntyre, uh, Matt... You got to pour one out for me because my beloved heavy machinery lost to a, I, I, I guess the word we'll use is cobbled together tag team of Dolph Ziggler and Robert Reginald Rue yeah. in a tag team turmoil tournament to decide who gets to fight for those beloved tag team titles. Basically a, a sped up version of, the, of King of the Ring, uh, the tag team style. So, um, let's see. We have a whole division of, of guys that are strictly tag teams. That specialize in this match Right. Type. You'd think that... They train their whole lives. They have one friend. They're, they're reviewing video on a weekly basis on all their opponents and then honing their craft as a tag team, specifically... Otis and Tucky going through hours and hours of tape. Yeah. Hours of tape. <laughs> they're not... They're not just doing stakes and weights. It's uh, it's tapes too. Stakes, weights, tapes. <laughs> but uh, it, Mike, it wasn't enough. They they didn't practice enough. Something must have gotten in the way. Maybe it was all their merchandising and ads they had to do. You know, um, for no, I, I, you know, I think you were right. You were right on the money. There was no tape on Dolph and Robert tagging up. <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's if, that. That's what happened. If they were smart enough, as like you know, they're coaching up these announcers during the show. How do you not grab onto that? How do you not use that when that's like a regular sporting? Like, you didn't have any tape on the guy. You know, you yeah, trade for a no guy in the NFL. Yep. Like last week of the trade deadline, you bring him over. 
brand new running back and he runs for 200 yards. He didn't have any tape on him. That's how he's able to do it. Or you get you get an injury and you get a brand new quarterback coming in who's, you know. Scotty Too Hottie is, he's just holding his head in his hands because he <laughs> didn't have any tape for his, his, his young protégés. I I was stunned. But uh, I, I, I know you're excited to put uh, your Dolph Ziggler t-shirts to use again. That's very exciting news. Um, I don't feel super great about it because now we're just running this division into the ground again when we thought we were kind of building it up. Yeah, I mean, we had the O. We love heavy machinery, uh, but I, I think that we have some sort of pragmatic approach where they're kind of a comedy act, so they can kind of lean on, well, we don't need to win because they're still on TV entertaining us. Mm-hmm. All right, it's kind of a tough pill to swallow, but we swallowed it. But the OC was in this tournament, Matt. Yeah. The Viking Raiders in this tournament. The B team, or at least a fucking team. (laughs) They go out immediately. Uh, It just, I don't know. Like, I understand that they're on the payroll. You know, Dolph does a great job for this company. And Robert Rudy uh, works for this company. So... You know, finding something for these two guys to do, it's uh, it's really shocking stuff. Because uh, I, I, I find it very hard to believe that those two guys are going to find a way to pin either the most pushed guy in the company in Seth Rollins or Braun Strowman. Yeah, that is, uh, that is kind of weird to try and put together how this is going to end. Because you figure... Um... Like, I thought Braun Strowman was going to be going over at the end of the night, too. And then this whole thing... The situation with the tag titles and then him possibly fighting for the universal title. Like, it all was going to make sense, right? He was going to be draped in gold like the Undisputed Era. It's just it was going to be Braun Strowman's huge frame covered in gold. Um, like, I, I honestly, that 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 would be interesting. That would actually be kind of fun to watch. Like, uh, you know, you're building, like, the dynasty, but it's, you know, it's just a single guy. Um, we all love... We all love Tiger Woods when he was winning every single Open, uh, you know, back in late 90s, early 2000s. Um, that was when I actually watched golf. So there's there's that idea. That that can work. You write it the right way, and Braun Strowman becomes, you know, the unstoppable juggernaut, and you got to find some way to take him down, which, you know, you just got to cheat a couple different times, and you take him down. All that being said... Um, I have no idea. I have no clue what the fuck they're doing because <laughs> it it looks like he's going to lose the tag titles, and I don't think they're ready to put the universal title on his shoulder either, based on these conversations they're having uh, <laughs> in these segments with Seth and Braun. And uh, Seth, I mean, unless he's getting married real quick after this engagement to Becky, I don't think he's ready for time off. Um, no. And we don't have a new U.S. Uh, champion, which which would have been Braun Strowman had he been able to hold down AJ Styles at the end of the night. So, what are what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. It's is the uh, tag division that a, boring? I I guess I guess to like I I guess to our beloved hero, uh, you know, Mr. Paul Heyman, who's who's. His thumb is supposed to be all over these stories, Matt. So he's the one who's, uh, you know, taking your boy Drew out in the first round. He's the one pushing Ricochet, who can't talk all the way to the finals. Uh, giving a shot to Dolph and Robert Roode as a tag team. <laughs> and uh, Braun Strowman, you know, it's uh, it's autumn. There's pumpkin spice lattes, and Braun Strowman is in the title picture. It just goes hand in hand, so... Well, I don't know. I guess this is this is just a, a couple of weeks here where we kind of punt bad ideas and we hit like three of them all all across the card. <laughs> um, I don't know if we can keep dwelling on this area because there's things we're actually excited about yeah. that are coming up this weekend that we could transition to. But I know we wanted to give an update on uh, the going ons of the WWE. Yeah, we, we did. Can we talk Mission about something that's gonna. <laughs> Can we is talk that, about something that's going to raise the energy level a little bit for this show? Well, I, I mean, when you 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 can't you can't uh, trail off and then <laughs> not transition. You got to trail we off. We can do and it. Transition. Then we got high energy. We can do it. Come on. 
Yeah, you can. No, you tell yourself that. Damn it. It's still real to me. Let's uh, talk about NXT. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome episode of NXT that just ended. Uh, it, we're we're recording now at nine thirty six. So we're a half hour past. Mike NXT. I I loved it. I thought that Dijakovic this was a classic and NXT met, episode. And the hell yeah. Oh, God Preach damn it. it. And the Keith Lee man. Preach it, Matt. I'm so excited. Preach it. God damn it. <laughs> that 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 match was one of the best NXT uh regular programming matches I think we've seen. Hmm. And we're talking we're not talking takeovers, but regular matches that that has to be number 1. Yeah, I, I, still, I can't think of I another one. I still call one. them I still call them free matches even though I'm paying 9.99 no, to watch. Not free. Them. But uh, oh. That I'll just say it. Uh, there's no qualifier here. That that's the best match that we've had on a on a Wednesday night. See what? Here's the problem. Uh, I was so excited. I I yelled over which match you named, and I could honestly still ask which match you're talking about because I so thoroughly enjoyed the Undisputed Era Triumph and the Dominic Dijakovic Keith Lee match. I will say. So I'm watching both of those muted. Um, so you probably were juiced up because there was gold on the line for Undisputed Era. That I'm saying Dijakovic. No, no, no. Just, uh, I'll throw this out there. Uh, like, Dijakovic and Keith Lee muted was a million times better than Undisputed Era and the Street Profits. I, I just, I, I didn't think, it was a good match, but Dijakovic and Keith Lee, to me, like, they did stuff I've never seen before, and I think that's what has always been defining NXT, and we keep falling in love with wrestlers because we keep seeing things we've never seen before. So when you put two 300-pound guys in the ring and they're flipping like luchadors, um, I mean, god damn. I, I know they're in Florida, so there is the possibility that they're using one of the space station uh, training facilities so that these guys can float. But I don't know how they kept all the fans se- seated. So if we're crossing <laughs> that out, the only other option is that this is just complete CGI in these matches uh, because this is just, I, it's not real. There's no way these guys are that great. But if it is true, I, Mike, we are, this. these are the two guys that have to take over like for NXT, even though side note, I don't think anybody's leaving NXT, but go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, I think, uh, these, these two guys could be pillars of the NXT division. Um, as they go into you know regular cable TV, uh, Dijakovic and Keith Lee are magic. Uh, I think we've seen them. Is it? We saw the match where they uh, Dijakovic you know got injured, and then this is kind of the follow up. But I'm pretty sure this is the third match. This was the rubber match. Um, at least you know as far as the TV storyline goes. I, but, I can't yeah. confirm or yeah. deny that, but I know they've fought he, a ton in their career. Yeah. Um, the athleticism here is 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 so incredible, um, and you know, so Morrow was was really like like going old school Jr. You know, calling Keith Lee with those grizzly bear paw slaps. Oh my! And then the the big discus boot from Dijakovic. Um, well, you had you gave me the the pop of the night was your tweet about uh, not the Spanish fly, but it was. What did you call it? Oh, the uh, yeah, I called it the Spanish Rhino Beetle. Yeah, because uh, it was a Spanish, it was a top rope avalanche Spanish fly from a three hundred pound man onto a two hundred seventy five pound man. It was an incredible visual feat. Again, um, something I've never seen before uh, with two giant behemoths throwing that around. But I, I'm giving you props. That was that was Morrow level uh, creativity there, and I know you posted it right after. Uh, <laughs> Right after the match. Yeah, so. somebody uh, somebody tried to chase me and say, why didn't you call it a Spanish horsefly? I'm like, well, you know, that is technically a fly upgrade, but I, I, I wanted to go top shelf with my bugs. And yeah. I think Keith Lee much more resembles a rhino beetle than he does a horsefly. Uh, it, was, it was an incredible visual sight. Um... The whole earth shook. I know it was a tape segment, but you probably still felt it today. Um, no, now you know what you I mean, felt three weeks ago. A few yeah, days now ago. you know you felt three weeks ago. Well, there's ago. still aftershocks. They're still coming through the earth. Um, 
and it's just cool because I, I I don't it's it's a great match for in the moment like I don't care about these guys getting called up I just want more of them being the best thing on NXT like this could be one of their next big feuds that they can sell for a while yeah I I especially with this going to USA I think we know Undisputed Era is not going anywhere um what's so funny right. is how dumb we should all feel for trying to figure out how we're going to get the oc and undisputed era together uh the oc is headed downhill and uh undisputed era is most certainly here to help uh nxt on usa take off so that's not happening but what is going to continue to happen is some interesting television on on, uh, on nxt and uh if there's anything to help you gain a little bit of confidence that this this brand is going to continue to grow and oh, possibly still yeah. be the best thing on wednesday nights which mike we'll talk about that in a little bit um i think it's these two guys and if we want to start well, a chant of these two guys fans of brothers of discussion go ahead You're sitting in your car go well just these wait we'll give you 30 these two guys these, these two guys. guys these two guys these two guys all right um uh, the so we had two excellent matches uh Dijakovic, uh back in the ring going up against keith lee we had undisputed era becoming the only three-time nxt tag team champions uh, uh deserved much deserved they're they're a much better tag team than uh montez and angelo it's 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 noticeably different like how how much more fluid undisputed era is um and it's I, like watching watching the whole show together it's almost like if keith lee never makes it as a singles guy man can you imagine him and montez like suiting up and kick you know, kicking angelo to the curb <laughs> yeah the weak link there is pretty obvious um yeah it's and it's great to see too like uh seeing these two guys start to create a, a better personality i think on the main roster than they ever did uh for themselves in nxt but even to that end it's montez who owns those promos too um and i think angelo he, he better get a wake-up call soon from from somebody that's in charge because man if you if you want to make like these great tag teams and great characters you gotta have no problem like tossing a guy like Angelo. He's not a horrible pro wrestler, right? I think we're in no. the agreement there, and he's got right. pretty good chemistry yep. with Montez. But uh, when you want to talk about charisma and athleticism, and I mean, <laughs> there's, I mean, you know, we, we're both fans of the office. You got to put the show beats out front, and I don't think Dawkins is a show beat. Like he's. He doesn't have the pogo leg, the pogo legs. Oh my! You know, like Montez does, and then you know he's not as big as Keith Lee, and he's not as athletic as Keith Lee. So it's kind of like, what is it you do here? You know, <laughs> he's just got to work on the tools a little bit, but he he could very easily get left behind if he doesn't, you know, make some moves. Got to start making moves, man. Making moves, making moves, um, making million dollar, making moves. million dollar moves. Uh, we we would be remiss if we didn't mention the biggest move of NXT this week. Uh, it looks like Shayna finally got. Should she get called up? There's finally somebody who could watch the throne. Because Rhea Ripley made her t- TV her TV her TV <laughs> debut. She made her TV well, debut on NXT, yeah, and I fell off my couch. I was so excited. My heart is so full of love. Love, love, love. <laughs> I'm such a huge Rhea Ripley fan. Um, I love how intense she is. I feel like she could legitimately, maybe not beat like Shayna Baszler in an alley, but she would put up a real fight. Mike, you, you talked earlier about like a, kind of a disappointing week for, for Raw and SmackDown and wanting to juice up the energy. Folks, if you yeah. can't feel it right now. God, Can you feel I, it? I, I'm... <laughs> Can you feel it? <laughs> I'm hoping Dajakovic and Keith Lee take over the world. Rhea Ripley showing up. Um, yes. yes. I can't wait for NXT. I can't yeah. wait. It, I mean, this is this is really turning into something, too. Like this this USA or the Wednesday Night Wars, which we, we talked a lot about last week. Um, and I, I even made a few people angry tweeting out, like, 
you know, who, who has the better outlook. And some people were like, it doesn't matter who has a better outlook. We're getting wrestling. You know what? It's a goddamn thing to talk about. Uh, because if... <laughs> If it was comparing it to SmackDown and Raw... Really? Were you guys saying that when TNA Impact was on? Right. I don't think so. <laughs> if it was about comparing like the outlook for AEW against uh, Raw and SmackDown, now, obviously the viewership, you know, they'll struggle to reach numbers for AEW. But I think we're all pretty confident you know, in, in this idea that there's going to be a completely different show being offered for what the hardcore wrestling fan wants out of AEW and what they're getting from Raw and SmackDown. That being said, the Wednesday Night War is about NXT and AEW. And with Rhea Ripley being thrown in there, Mike, I mean, the, the women's division for AEW is some weak-ass sauce right now. And if you... Yeah. If, if, I mean, it, it's not to say again. You, this is man, like talking about Angela Shayna Dawkins. on that roster. What? Can you imagine Shayna on that roster? It would just she'd have. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's no. There's nobody in the wings. It's like right now with Shayna. It was well. Let's kind of see what happens. You know, we got some people who are green or they can't quite cut a promo. Like AEW. Oh my God! If like like Brandy or. Uh, Britt had to go up against Shayna. I think Shayna would get bored and just start snapping their arms off. Like, yeah, and you're, you're not looking at a long-term solution with an awesome Kong, so that's no. But when you talk about Rhea Ripley, this, I mean, this girl's, you know, for life, my man. Like, this is this is a long-lasting contract. This is somebody who's been globe trotting with their brand. Um, <laughs> I just, and we're just talking again. We're talking facts, and again can't state enough you and i want to see aew be successful because we love pro wrestling but if we're talking about like with some some of the shots that are being thrown and the confidence that's coming out and again we'll touch on the problem areas that we we're already seeing with aew um and we have to compare aew to what will be this war with nxt oh boy um I got to tell you, Mike, right now it's an easy decision. Uh, Besides the fact it would be a first few weeks of AEW, if it wasn't that, there'd be no reason that I'm tuning away from NXT to make sure I I check out AEW right now. Right now, that's easy for me to say. Um, yeah. I mean, like, you can think (laughs) about when... No, you're you're right. There's 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 a lot to debate there. Uh, I was just gonna say, like you know, back in the day before streaming services, uh, if a TV show wasn't doing super well, you kind of juggle what day, you know, they um, yeah. broadcast it. So you know, Thursday was like the big money nights because uh, Friday you go out to eat. Uh, Monday there's football, so you got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and now what we're learning is. AEW is going to potentially have to backpedal. I mean, there's, you know, there's no rumors or anything like that. It's not, we're not that kind of show. But I'm just saying that you're going to try and go up against, like, Triple H's baby. Uh, Which, if you're asking, like, you know, a fan like us, a heavy, you know, involved fan who knows all the storylines, knows all these characters, knows that, you know, their, their careers before they're even in WWE... This is a nightmare scenario that NXT is just getting revved up. Yep. Like, another home run episode like this should have AEW kind of thinking, oh, Jesus, maybe we should move to Monday or Tuesday. (laughs) Um, Well, it'll be... This is not... Like, this is not the show that we're going to defeat. Right now. We can steal... We can steal eyeballs, you know, from Monday Night Raw if we started, like, at 9 p.m. That would be brilliant, because... Traditionally, they, you know, WWE will open up Mondays with a hot segment with a big star, and then they'll have maybe one match, and then they'll kind of flounder a bit till 10. So, AEW's got to desperately get eyeballs on, and then grow from there. And I don't think going up against WWE's version of the indie show is the, the way to do it. Yeah, and there's probably still some secret weapons that uh, still haven't been utilized, which is the scary thing. I mean, for AEW, it's about get every guy we have 
into the show because we got nothing else. Um, and for NXT, it's, well, if that guy gets hurt, I guess we can go to the Performance Center and see if he can fill out the first match of the show. And let's give this guy a shot, and we'll start doing the Performance Center on the network so people can get to know these guys as human beings. And, um, yeah, I don't know if this is the best time to transition, but, uh, I mean, we got a lot of people are going crazy for that Kenny Omega promo uh, on Moxley, on the guy he's yeah. not fighting at All Out uh mike that yeah. promo uh that is some stinky dog shit um if you ask me if your best <laughs> didn't didn't do a lot for if you if you're best friends with kenny omega sure i get it it's cute he's on tv that's pretty cool to see him doing that um mike that, on TV. that delivery was <laughs> lacked so much of the passion that i thought i was told about um so like so much hate that I thought should have been coursing through his veins and just sort of like snarky jokey kind of bullshit, which as you know, I hate it when it comes out of Bailey's mouth, Mike. So why the fuck am I going to be a fan of it just because it's coming out of somebody from AEW's mouth? Um, also, Kenny, man, put your goddamn hands down. <laughs> what? <laughs> he tweeted out a joke that it reminded me of uh, Ricky Bobby from... Uh, Talladega Nights. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yep. <laughs> the interviewer keeps putting his hands down out of the shot. Ricky keeps putting his hands right. back up. Yeah. And this is a pre-recorded promo. That was the best take we got, okay? Yeah, that, I mean, Put it in the JR, can. JR's behind the camera going, hey, son, this ain't live. You can do it again. <laughs> no, no. I'm just going to put my hands up again. No, just put them down. I'm going to put them up again. Wait. Put them down. Why do I say bang? <laughs> Sorry. Now I'm just making fun of Kenny. Uh, but I, let's, uh, let's, let's... Yeah, you want to get into the card a yeah, little bit? Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. and the, We'll jump into that match first, which is, is super sad that, that Moxley isn't going to make it to All Out. Uh, because, Mike, some of the things that makes AEW so cool, and yes, I am challenging this idea, <laughs> is that these wrestlers, Mike, can wrestle wherever they want. Unfortunately... John Moxley suffered an injury, and now either their main event or main event number two that they've been pumping for months will not happen. Yes. No. So the very little uh, juice, information, uh, promos that we get for these matches is just that small amount, whoo, poof, gone. <laughs> Even less. I know that that like I wanted to see Moxley in a in a big match. Um, that that takes a little bit of the juice out of the out of the sales, if you will. Yep. Um, I mean we're getting a really good replacement. I I don't know if on the indie scene you could have found somebody more exciting than Pac, uh, the bastard himself. Mm -hmm. It's just, mm, mm, mm. we 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 need the TV tapings to get like going. Because we got to find a way to build these storylines without having to subscribe to YouTube and make sure to sign in. And I, I don't know. I, I know the YouTube thing. It's I think it's one generation um, like behind us is really into that. Uh, but I think to really kickstart this stuff and really get people going, uh, I, I know Cody is he's gonna put his hand to his heart and you know I pledge allegiance to these fans that you know our types of fans, but. You were already gonna have a, a t like a tough time with Kenny Omega's weak sauce, and then Moxley with minimal, you know, storyline. Now you're just gonna try to force feed Omega versus Pac, like in a in a gentleman's contest, because they, they don't have a feud yet. Right. And I I'll, I'll say this, um, I I you know I'm not the guy who is watching YouTube nonstop, but the company that's helping AEW grow. In their own preview of the show, All Out, their reoccurring complaint is that there isn't enough juice in any of these matches. There aren't any promos. There isn't a lot of story. It's just we kind of known that this is these are going to be the matches for a while, and a lot of the, the background is built off of a pre-existing character. So even Bleacher Report, again, the... the what do we want to say? The... Uh, who's ever... Uh, producing or, or helping distribute there we go the distributor of some of the yes. aew content 
so they would obviously benefit from this doing very well uh has been pretty critical of what's been going on to to boost all out so i i think at least to that end um well i'll say two things no i'm not watching youtube but by the sound of it there still isn't a lot out there and number two don't just put stuff on youtube man like come on put it somewhere else let's give me give me a social media account that's easier to follow that i don't need to be watching it like that minute or or i miss it kind of thing like give me something i can come back to and save for later um you gotta you gotta I mean, give some sort of access it can't be in the some, network yeah but. i i think in in some capacity they they have awareness of advertising so i'm getting blown up with you know attend the first ever aew tv taping so you know i get that but i, I don't get like creative content to make me watch these storylines i which honestly mike if you're getting <laughs> they're doing bad marketing if you're getting stuff for you to attend it and you live in michigan that's bad <laughs> Well, they're, what they're doing is, uh, they're, they're advertising, I don't know if you saw it, they're advertising like a trip, where you get a couple tickets. Oh, yeah, I put my name in that hat. Yeah, that, that's, sorry, that's, I should have explained no, you're it. Fine. That's, that's what I was referring to. <laughs> uh, well, I gotta say Omega and Pac is really, you know, in trouble, because we, you know, we, we saw that at, what was it, Survivor Series, I think, was it AJ Styles or Finn Balor had to step in for one of them being injured? And they had a one on one match. Yeah. So I mean, you know, that stuff happens, so we can't really get too, you know, up in arms over that. It's just it reminds us that there wasn't really a storyline to begin with with Omega and Moxley. And I don't know. Uh I guess one match where there definitely is storyline is, you know, Cody versus Sean Spears, because uh, you know, formerly Ty Dillinger came out and smashed Cody with a chair, cracked his skull open, there's blood everywhere. A uh, huge gash on Cody's head. Um, as to why, I, I hope you're combing YouTube because I'm not really sure. I know Sean; he wanted to be on TV. Um, he wasn't on the card really, so I guess he beat up his boss. I, I guess if I could hit my boss with a chair, I would. Uh, that's the story. Yeah, and, and even, like, some of the stuff I've seen online is Sean Spears attacking uh, MJF. So, I and considering I, I don't see, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm looking at this, and I've gone over it, I swear, multiple times. I don't see an MJF match, so you got to figure he's going to be ringside or figure into the, the end of this so that Sean Spears can have a feud going forward. Um, right. That's all I saw was him attacking mjf in an indie show and again it doesn't really help boost sean and cody it just <laughs> i mean honestly the the most notable thing that sean spears or ty dillinger or whatever I, I, we learned what his real name is this past week uh again the most notable thing he did was get married to peyton royce uh which is a good decision yeah lock that up outstanding move on sean spears's career <laughs> Uh, at least one of them is going to be doing really well. Um, I, you know, another, another nothing story. Uh, I mean, you, you kind of, you could kind of sprint through the card here. You got Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc versus Joey Janela. I, you know, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Best friends, Dark Order. I, you know, it'll probably be fine. <laughs> Rio versus Hik Hikaru Shida. You know. Oh, probably be fine. Luchasaurus, the Jungle Boy himself, Marco Stunt, and the SoCal Uncensored. I, I'm sure it'll be fine. You got Private Party versus Angelico and Jack Evans. I'm sure it'll be fine. And then you got the 21 Woman Casino Battle Royale. AEW, we care about tag teams. We care about women's wrestling. And that's why we put all our women in one match. <laughs> Oh man, that is uh, uh, that's a <laughs> that's a juicy point that we could dive into, but I, I, a lot a lot of promises uh, so far. Maybe find it out they can't. No, I, I mean, give everybody a I spot mean, okay. on the card. And so to be fair, uh, Hikaru and Rio are women, so oh, right, we do right, get right. that. So we get one, we get a one-on-one -on -one match, and then the other women on 
the roster get that are going to be in another pointless battle royale <laughs> that makes three consecutive aew pay-per-views with a battle royale of some kind yep now do i love a good royal rumble you bet your fucking ass i do but <laughs> part of what's great about them is we you know there's one you know and and it it means quite a bit yeah, there's a lot on the line. It's not just, well, someone's left. Uh, I mean, there's to, traditionally something on the line. I, I will say, and and uh, just to argue one thing in favor of AEW, uh, it did lead to Hangman Page getting a match with uh, with Chris Jericho, who did a lot less to, to earn this match. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. But, um, yeah, you know, one guy's got to defeat. 30 um and chris jericho you know just had to i mean okay he beat kenny omega all right but <laughs> the reason i feel like we could be critical about this is two things one the stories aren't there two it's gonna cost us like 60 dollars to watch this oh, yeah oh god in so, heaven <laughs> as much as i like wrestling it's like what i i don't know like I don't know. It's that, uh, no, know, that's it's, a no. It's it's that's a hefty amount. That's something that you don't skip over when you're going through your credit card bill. <laughs> you know, there's I all mean, the Taco Bell trips. That's nothing. Sure, there's a hundred of them in a week, but you still, it's only like three, four bucks. That I'm not skipping over. I'm gonna see that sixty bucks. I'm gonna go. What the f- who who stole my credit card? I'd never buy anything for sixty bucks. And there we go. We're going to have, uh, you know, for $60, I'm going to find out uh, that Chris Jericho beat Hangman Page and, you know, a roll-up or something uh, so that Adam Page still looks strong. Uh, I mean, would I get enjoyment of, like, Avengers, Infinity War, and Endgame if it was just the superheroes punching each other? Yeah, I mean, I like Marvel Ultimate Alliance. It's a fun right. game, but, like... There's a reason there's the game, and then there's the movie where there's the story. And (laughs) right now, AEW is Marvel Ultimate Alliance, and we need them to be Avengers Endgame. I will say, when I do have buy the most recent wrestling game, I do sit there and like have like promos and talk them out when nobody's home because I'm a psychopath. But uh, I still add some story to that, so I I juice it up a lot lot more than we're seeing from All Out and. uh, Again, totally fair for us to say that because the show is, what, three days away and I'm going to drop some major dough down and probably be too tired to watch the whole thing because of uh, the little one. So <laughs> I'll, I'll hopefully I'll record it and have another way to watch it later. Um, uh, man, let's uh, sprint through the winners. Private Party, a Joko Jack Evans. Who you got? Uh, private Party. Same. 21 woman <laughs> battle royal. You gotta name somebody not Rio or Hikaru. All right, go. Uh, let's let's just say it'll be Brandy because she's been cheating and using her name to like get stuff, and she's not a good wrestler, uh-huh. so she's gonna cheat to win the battle royal. I think in a shocker, AJ Lee returns. All oh right, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, Stunt versus SoCal, uncensored. Oh, am I going? I'll pick Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. That's what I'm picking. <laughs> Rio Hikaru. Who you got? Uh, wait, let me toss a coin in the air. Fling, bling, bling, bling. Uh, Rio it is. <laughs> hey same Z's. All right, we got the best friends uh, in the Dark Order. All right, legit. This should be a fun Dark match Order. to watch because I really enjoy watching the best friends and the Dark Order is something that, that at least piques my interest and I sit forward in the chair uh, when I'm watching. Yeah. So, like, without a storyline, I think there'll still be a very good story going on uh, between the ropes. So, that being said, let's go Dark Order because I think they need some good heels. Hey! We are identical. Identical. All right. Darby Allen. Mr. Jim Havoc himself <laughs> and Joseph Janela. Matt, um, who's taking I'm it? I'm giving it to Jimmy Havoc because he hasn't necessarily been oh. featured in a big... You know, you got... Joey was uh, fighting Moxley. 
Darby got to fight That's Cody, right. so Jimmy's just kind of been in the background. So I think this will be his opportunity to stand out with two guys who've already gotten the rub getting major matches. That's right. I think uh, Janela's going to take barbed wire to the face. I think Darby Allen is going to take a suicide dive into a wood chipper, leaving <laughs> Jimmy Havoc on top. Two minutes Man. into the match. Yeah, go. Sean Spears. Mr. Royce himself versus Cody. Don't you dare call him anything else. Who you got? All right. Here's how I'm booking this. They've gone... Well, no, you know what? This doesn't make any sense because he just smashed MJF with the chair. I was going to say MJF was going to turn on Cody, but that doesn't make any... If they do that, that doesn't make any goddamn sense, even though I just was about to say it. Mike? It's a story! (laughs) Let's do... uh... I'm going to say Sean wins with some shenanigans that enrages MJF and still leads into a, a good uh, bout Ooh, for them going forward. I, I think you were right the first time. MJF is going to join Sean Polish Pickle Spears himself, <laughs> and they are going to sabotage Mr. Rhodes. Oh, Matt, in a ladder match, thank God. Because those young bucks do not care about the rules of tag team wrestling. Mr. Tornadoes themselves, the Young Bucks against the Lucha Bros. Who we got for the Triple A World Tag Teamed Championships? Easy peasy, Mike. Lucha Bros. Young Bucks. <laughs> oh! Lucha Bros are taking this because we still don't have an AEW Tag Team Championship. Uh, Lucha Bros. I don't think. I don't think they're sticking around. Like I don't think this is their full time gig. So the Young Bucks are going to take or be involved in some sort of AEW Tag Team Championship, uh, which means Lucha Bros are going to walk away with theirs. Hmm. I'm picking the Young Bucks because uh, they always win. All right. Kenny Omega versus Pac. Gentlemen's contest. It's be Kenny. No story. Oh, I am picking Pac. I'm picking Pac because... <laughs> I X-Pac. think what's going to happen. <laughs> X-Pac. Oh, flippity, flippity, fuck. Um, I wish we had drops. <laughs> I'm picking. X-Pac. <laughs> <laughs> why Dinner am I picking now. Pac? Yeah. Why? I think. I didn't ask that, but go ahead. <laughs> I know, and nobody asks, but let me tell you. Uh, Pac is going over. Uh... I think they're going to try and butter him up. Ooh. And we're, hey, we're going to push you real, real good. Real good. And then he's going to win <laughs> this match and then retire from AEW. I want a a big hot dog fuck you real room. bad. Sorry. I want, to, <laughs> I want to pin Kenny Omega real bad. <laughs> so, in our main event for the AEW All Elite Wrestling Woo! World's Championship, Hangman, not Allen, Hangman Adam Page, not former Minnesota Viking, versus Chris, <laughs> former WWE employee Jericho. Matt, who do you got? <laughs> if I can remember what you just said, I'd, I'd, I'd give it to Hangman. Uh, Chris Jericho's taken this for the same reason that Glow ended their first season the way they did. Uh, the chase is always better, and if they're going to build out this whole roster... Um, I, I don't think it starts with giving Adam the title. I think it starts with having Adam chase for the title uh, after Chris wins with some shenanigans and uh, we start to actually get behind Hangman Page. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it would be a colossal mistake to make Adam Page the champion so early yeah. because it, it wouldn't mean anything in a fresh baby show. Um I think best case scenario for all of these people is that in some capacity, they just offer half the company shares to see. God damn it! Ah. That's <laughs> so. I was gonna. I think I was... if they're if they're taking this card <laughs> and these stories up against NXT, yeah, they are royally fucked. I don't know what they're gonna do on Wednesdays. It's it's either CM Punk, Mike. Or, or bust. Or the company goes on. Right. <laughs> no, just, you gotta leave Wednesdays, You gotta, or you gotta pick up Punk, or you go under. Those are your three options. This, if I'm in the boardroom, I have 
three manila folders. You could pick option A, option B, option C. That's it. You got one of those three. There's no fourth option. You don't you, you don't financial footwork and find your way to a miracle profit. No, you have one of these three. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it was either that or Tony Khan gives away that um, rich people do have time machines and they're bringing late 90s Stone Cold uh, into the fray. So it's it's got to be one of the, like, if they get that desperate, that's, <laughs> that, that's my prediction. I was going to ask you who you thought would be the big surprise, uh, like, I don't know, run in into the show, but... Yeah, you totally stole my thunder again. I, I'm totally picking I, uh, CM Punk to, to, to drop by and, and give a little wave. Yeah, I, I know. It's it's not going to happen because I think that guy is just so disenfranchised with professional wrestling. Um, you know, we just like, oh, he's in, they're in Chicago, maybe. And it's just, dude, the UFC thing's not going to work. I don't know how much longer these this comic book thing's going to you know, run out. The people are dying to buy your stupid t-shirts and watch you fake fight. Just get back in the ring, man. I don't know. It's it's best for his, you know, his family's, you know, uh, future assets. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, Mike, I think I think we're ready to move on, right, to the show that I starts so. at 2 o'clock on Saturday. That Who knows if yeah. I'll be awake for that one either because uh, you kind of just get sleep when you can. Mike, it's NXT. Oh Jesus! NXT UK Takeover Cardiff. Um, yes. I'm pretty stoked for this. Uh, it might be misguided just because I'm so high on NXT right now. I'm I'm expecting this to be an amazing show. Uh, but at least we get to see Walter do something longer than a couple minutes, right? Not just do another promo. With that match. Um... They, they started, you know, kind of selling that story, like British Strong Style and Imperium at uh, uh, that Rockstar Mud Fest out in the UK. Yeah. Uh, where Imperium just destroyed British Strong Style. Uh, and then Tyler got to get some revenge last week. Uh, he ran out in his flip-flops, of course. Uh, ran out in his flip-flops, used the chair, beat up all these guys, and he ultimately was able to powerbomb walter which was another just incredible display by the big strong boy yep. uh, i love how nxt uk sometimes it can sometimes it could be a curse in this case i think it helps uh like you had time to let this storyline marinate and by the way you had a storyline god damn um <laughs> and you know, Tyler's he's the he's the he's the underdog. He's the big strong boy, but he's I don't know what, five seven, five eight, and he's you know, maybe maybe a hundred and ninety pounds, but the dude's all quads, man. He's all lower body strength and he's able to pick up that big B for himself. The Ring General Walter. I, I'm I'm really excited to see this match. Um I, I love all the Tyler spots. Uh, I love the violence in Walter matches. I'm excited to see the, these two guys go at it for half an hour. I mean, I, I there's not much else to, to jump off of with that. Uh, uh, Tyler Bate and, and Walt, I, I don't think we're going to see uh, a title change. I think... No. Uh, I mean, we can we can run through it again like we did with, with AEW. Um, that That's kind of the disappointing side of it, is this Walter push uh, is not done. And it's going to really run off the rails if he loses the title in the middle of it. Um, right. But, yeah, this, this is something where they're building, you know, the super duper, uh, I was going to say face, but m more in regards to, like, who's running the company now that, uh, you know, you've got, like, Pete Dunn running out. But, um, it's the, the, again, uh, the long story short, Walter's push isn't done. That's the only thing hurting this match is that we know – the outcome already which i could argue i think we know the outcome of the nxt uk women's championship match too um yeah i think i would be very surprised if tony lost um and real quick just before we leave walter's match it's 
it's true. I think it is written in, you know, it's already written in stone that Walter's going to leave with the championship, but it kind of reminds me of that, that Rumble match when it was uh, Finn Balor versus Brock, and with almost 100% certainty, we thought Brock was going to win, but Finn is such a great storyteller. He got you to believe, oh my God, maybe, maybe they are going to do something crazy. Yeah. And I think Tyler, the prodigy, uh, he, he could potentially do that as well. But kind of sashaying into um, Tony and Kaylee, um, I think that Kaylee's, her promos have been really strong. Yep. Uh, that's why she's getting this spot. Tony's have been... Uh, well, how about her being left... Not as bad as Ricochet's. <laughs> uh, but... Well, she didn't even say anything in their last encounter, which I think was on purpose, right? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was on purpose. Yeah. Well, hmm? I mean, because she blows at promos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, uh, I I like Tony. I just I can't I can't stop being butt hurt because she took the belt off my beloved Rhea Ripley. Um, yeah. She is. She's legi- like a legitimately you know, uh, very skilled, safe worker. Um, and you know somebody's a talented and charismatic character when you describe them as safe. Uh, but I know she's going to take care of Kaylee. I know it's going to be a strong up and down, you know, back and forth feud. And Tony's, you know, she's really got the, the good facial expressions. Um, I think when people kick out of her, you know, the false finishes, she, she really does look exasperated. I think she's really good at that. Um, it's just this match... I wouldn't mind seeing some different beef in there. I, I wouldn't mind seeing my beloved Rhea. We understand why she's not in there, but, you know, at some point, we want to get Piper in there, you know? Because um, I, I, I think that's part of the appeal of the NXT UK women's division is the, like, the variety and shapes and sizes. Like, Jazzy Gobbert is not even sniffing around this this belt like she should be. And, you know, she flanks Ginny, who is, my goodness, like an evil scarecrow. Uh, she's just, like, all <laughs> elbows somehow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Jazz, Jazzy is just this, you know, freakish, you know, like Ivan Drago, you know, with a, a mohawk and giant boobs. Like, it's, there's so many different <laughs> wild shapes on this division. And I feel like this match is two women who have kind of a stereotypical women's wrestler look so it's it's kind of not the most compelling matchup for for me but i think that the two of them will do a really good job i can i can get on board with that um i mean that would be like to talk about how safe walter is i don't think tony's that safe but i don't again i it's always kind of been in the cards for nxt to let someone hold on um hold on to those titles but what about the tag team titles, Mike? I gotta say, uh... probably. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll throw I'll, I'll throw this out there first. Zach Gibson and James Drake, or else uh, let's let me back up. I'm about to give a lot of credit to James Drake. Zach Gibson, best promo artist in NXT UK, easily. Liverpool's number one. I love that guy, man. Uh, did you get to see him this week, his promo? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, uh, just to sum it up real quick, uh, you know, he comes out with the title, and what we're trying to do is get, you know, it's the go-home show, so we're trying to get you all geeked for Saturday. So he comes out, starts talking, and what happens? Of course, the other teams start coming out to interrupt him. Traditionally, they get their entrance music, and everybody kind of looks at each other in the ring, and then fisticuffs get thrown down. <laughs> But Zach Gibson screamed over everybody's entrance music, over two different songs, and still said, Oh, great! If it isn't Mark Andrews and Flash Mark and Webster, (laughs) two wrestlers who don't deserve to be in the ring, they don't deserve a song, Oh, great! Here comes Mark Coffey and Wolfgang! Two more... Trots who don't deserve to be in the oh, 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 oh. and then they just started throwing punches and kicks at him. It was beautiful. Um, all his enemies were in ring gear. 
James Drake and Zach were in their fancy brown loafers. Oh my god. It was amazing. It was my, one of my favorite things of the nine hour wrestling extravaganza we've watched so far this week. Zach Gibson berating people through their entr- over their entrance songs in his brown loafers. It was awesome. Well, okay. Now I have reason to watch it. Now you gotta watch it. <laughs> oh great! It's Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster. Ooh. Wait, what you don't know is that was his third time doing it. So that was... <laughs> oh, great! It's Flash Morgan! <laughs> oh, my God. I love Zach. There's no way he's losing those belts on Saturday. There's no way. He's too good. But, but if he does... I'm okay with either one of these tag teams taking it and then winning it back later. Because we, we keep talking about building up rosters on the main roster. I mean, we still look at Andrews and Webster and then Wolf, Wolfgang and Coffee have totally turned into th- some fodder. Um, somebody's got to get some wins here, right? I I guess. I <sighs> We could have a series of no decisions. There's no game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, f- uh, real quick for the record, are you also picking Zach and his brown loafers on? Saturday? I mean, yeah, a thousand percent. <laughs> um, I mean, we can we can move on. I just I love Zach Gibson so much, and I want to get really good at that impression. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Dave Mastiff and Joe Coffey are going in a last man standing match, Matt. Um. Dave Mastiff, who had a, a whole, he had a whole cup of coffee in the Page movie, fighting with my family. I don't know if you saw him in the corner. Uh, and he's going up against Joe Coffee, who, if Zach Gibson is, he's peerless with the microphone. There's nobody who can touch him. But if there's somebody who could maybe someday, if Zach Gibson, you know. Uh, he had his larynx removed or something, and he, you know, his head was severed from his body. He'd still wheeze air in and out of one hole and out of another one to make angry sounds. <laughs> At that point, I think somebody who could come close to touching him is Joe Coffey. <laughs> uh, I'm a big Joe Coffey fan. This, this is a heavy Gallus card. Um, uh, we haven't, we haven't had any opportunities for all three of those guys to fight on one night. Uh, as far as who's going over, it feels like Joe Coffey is like a like a prove yourself heel. Um, so you know, if I was booking this show for like a month or two, what it sounds like is going to happen is Joe's going to put up a hell of a fight. Mastiff's going to go over, and Mastiff might be the one who has to go up against Walter at the next takeover. I I'll be honest, I I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with NXT UK enough, so I, I, I can take your word on it. I just know that, uh, like, Joe Coffey's had his shot. So it, it only makes sense that it's, like, to me, it's got to be Dave Mastiff stepping in to at least give a different a different look at this point. So I, I, I'm coming in still excited for the show, but not totally well-versed in what's going on. <laughs> Well, uh, I think if that is the case, um, if you tune in on Saturday, they have really good uh, highlight packages to tell you the whole story back and Fantastic. forth between the guys, <laughs> which is something you might not find if you try to watch wrestling a little bit later that same Saturday. <laughs> uh, Mastiff, is, he's in a proving ground. Uh, he's been, he feuded with Gallus for a little while, and now it's time for him to have a big payoff match against the undisputed leader of Gallus, Joe Coffey. Um, one match I don't think we want to dwell too much on. It's 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 going to be okay. Uh, Travis Banks versus Noam Dar. It's going to be a great athletic competition, but as far as guys who got their chance, like Banks, he already got to fight Walter. Um, and he got absolutely annihilated um, at for the, the UK strap. Yeah. That silly festival. This, yeah, but uh, Matt, I think the the big the big news is that Cesaro 
the Swiss Superman himself has declared that he wants to see what this NXT UK is all about. <laughs> yeah, I um, they they've been hinting at at Walter um, being the person that he approaches. Is that where the Dave Mastiff and Joe Coffey thing doesn't even need to come into play because Cesaro is going to come out and make a statement? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I, if it's just a statement, okay. But, I mean, I, I think right now I'm just spoiled because I keep thinking of that. Uh, the Irish Ace, Jordan Devlin, when he got to fight Finn Balor. Uh, and that, that was a really cool pop ski for me. So, I wish there was some way we could worm Cesaro onto the card, which is about one, two, three. We only got five matches, which is usually about right about where NXT is their cutoff, is five. Yeah. Um, so do you, do you maybe something could go like we've had instances like uh actually it's a perfect example the uh Trav Spanks was supposed to go up against uh Jordan Devlin and he got injured storyline wise during the night and that's when Finn Balor stepped in so yeah, I'm not saying they're gonna do an exact carbon copy of that but okay. yeah, we could find a way to get Cesaro in there yeah and I, I like the idea too of him uh maybe jumping into a feud uh, having you know a, a, a story to give this roster some more time to gel so i still don't know if the hour a week is enough for us to fall in love with with a lot of these characters outside of you know outside of zach gibson outside of walter tyler Bate was already established you know what i mean yeah so th there's still some room here so maybe give cesaro a shot because if we're both in agreement here that walter's not losing the title there's no way cesaro's taking it but at least you get another couple of months between, you know, maybe a special show or another takeover to uh, to let Walter continue to build and let these other guys kind of figure out who who really is the number one contender here. Um, maybe it's based off of actual performances, promos, or uh, you know, we we're just trying to fill out some more time for us to believe in, you know, a Flash Morgan Webster versus Walter. I I don't know. <laughs> uh yeah maybe uh hopefully not flash uh hopefully someone else uh but uh we'll we'll see um i i, I gotta say matt um uh, i hope if we flip a coin and one of us covers one show and one the other i hope i get nxt uk um and good luck with AEW. thanks yeah we'll see we'll, we'll let the fans know how that coin flip goes <laughs> here i'll do it right now oh fuck all right are you f so i get to call it then yes you know we are in completely different <laughs> recording areas i feel like whatever you pick i have a feeling whatever you pick you're gonna get aew but go I ahead i feel like we should do this like on you should flip it live on like twitter oh, I'm, I'm flipping it right now flip it live on Listen. twitter and then we'll know who's covering what and we can i think that's way more fun and interesting <laughs> but uh all right, fine. I'll uh, pick heads. You say fun and interesting. I'm gonna go with the word risky. Right now, I have all the cards. Heads. So what do you pick, Matt? <laughs> all right, it's tails. What's that mean? I almost said tails before <laughs> you were done saying heads. So what it means is that I'm okay. watching NXT UK, and that you <laughs> are fucked. Well, folks, I. Uh, what will probably happen is what always happens and is we'll both cover both opinions so. and <laughs> do the same joke with a slightly different gif and uh, better man um so folks we hope you do enjoy this saturday uh it, it should still prove to be fun even aew like we went into the other aew shows saying i don't know anything that's going on and then you just feel the joy of pro wrestling and it, it worked out great uh, it's just that there there should be a higher expectation from us and those uh, kind of like us saying, well, it's fine because it's free. Like that's not a thing anymore. So they, they've got to step up. No more production snafus, nothing like that. But I, I do hope for everybody out there, it's going to be watching AEW and NXT Cardiff. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, and of course, we'll be covering what happened. Oh, big burp in the that's how i talk to my little girl um 
we'll, we'll be covering everything, all the Fallout, uh, and all you have to do is uh, please uh, subscribe. And if you're if you really like the show, rate and review us. Uh, but subscribe, rate and review. Uh, we're, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. Uh, we're posting the show weekly on YouTube now. So if that's where you need to get your stuff, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, but we're everywhere that you are listening to podcasts, except for like live streams on like Twitch. But we're getting there. We got, we got episode 100 coming. But uh, just keep your head, uh, uh, you know, ear, ear to the ground, and we'll we'll let you know once live streams are coming, once once all that fun, fun stuff is coming. It's uh, for you to do that. You gotta follow us at BOD Podcast. Go to bodpodcast.com, brothersofdiscussion.com, and again follow or uh, subscribe, rate, and review uh, on wherever you are absorbing uh, the Brothers of Discussion podcast Matt another wonderful week and I'm excited I hope I get some sleep to cover the shit out of Saturday well that's that's my goal that you know you had plans A B and C that was not in plan B (laughs) so alright folks thanks for tuning in oh yeah cause we're coming Signing off. Goodbye.